Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Whether you're joining us live or on demand, we want to welcome you back to Mobile App Academy, where we show you how to build and configure mobile apps live on the Now platform. My name is Charlie Steiner, a product marketing manager here at ServiceNow, and today we'll be walking you through getting started with mobile localization. If you're joining us for the first time, this is a live building session that focuses on managing and building our mobile apps in real time. We'll have product experts on hand to provide guidance, best practices, and answer any of your questions posted in the Q&A window. We host these sessions every two weeks here on Zoom at 10 a.m. Pacific, and our recordings are posted to YouTube shortly after. So here at Mobile App Academy, what's really important to us is when we get insight from all of you, whether it's here in the chat or in our com mobile community, we base these session topics based around what we hear from you, what you wanna learn, and what may be impactful to what you're working on. So the links to our previous App Academy recordings on YouTube and to our mobile community will be dropped in the chat shortly. Today, we have a special guest. Stefan Lalonde is a platform architect on the solution innovation team here at ServiceNow. So without further ado, I'd love to go ahead and pass it over to Stefan so he can introduce himself and fill us in on today's topic. Stefan, take it away. Thank you, Charlie, and welcome everyone. As mentioned, my name is Stefan Lalonde. I'm a platform architect with ServiceNow. Um, and let me just go ahead and share my screen over here. Perfect. So uh, for today, obviously you've heard Charlie so far. We also have uh, David Ha and Fuho, uh, which are also co-hosts of today's session. So if you hear other voices other than mine, uh, that'll be either David or, or Fu, and then also be taking a look at the Q&A. So as I go along, and if you have questions, please go ahead and type your questions in the Q&A, and we'll make sure to address all of them or as many of them as possible. So today's uh, topic is mobile localization. So one of the things that as you start to, to you know, look at deploying mobile within your organization, um, if you have, you know, your interface is already translated to a different language, what you've probably realized is you go into the mobile application and there's some components that have been translated, others that haven't. So in today's session, I'm going to walk you through essentially what is required to uh, translate some of those components uh, that are that mobile really brings to you. So there's really three components, three parts of this agenda. Um, as Charlie mentioned, this is really much of a live configuration. So pretty much everything I'm going to do is going to be based on um, going to the instance, doing some quick configuration, showing my mobile phone and be going, doing that back and forth. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about some of the components to translating in mobile. So there's really three, um, the, the way I look at it. Um, and then I'll actually go through, you know, using two different approaches to do localization. And that gives you a little bit of flexibility. Sometimes one method works better than the other. And finally, I'll just kind of conclude with a few tips um, that I essentially um, kind of track down over time and, you know, as I've been playing uh, with this. So, and then obviously, uh, David, and Fu, feel free to interrupt me if there's questions in the Q&A. Uh, I have enough screens on my screen, so I won't be monitoring uh, those, but I'll let you guys do that. So a couple of different components. Um, so I, you see essentially my um, instance on the left-hand side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my phone on the right hand side so we're going to do a side by side comparison uh, there's a few different ways if you haven't um, done this before in this case in case people want are interested i use reflector um, some of the i think david and foo um, has their own approach of reflect uh, of uh, sharing the screen but this is the one that i use um, so here's kind of the starting point right so I'm going to do the configuration today via the agent, um, actually via the mobile applications, but it could have been the agent or the onboarding. So the, the translation slash localization of any one of those work the exact same way. So it really doesn't matter which one I would have picked. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit of kind of the starting point. So I have a couple different instances that are all kind of set. The, they're, they're configured the exact same way. Um, I'm going to log into them. Um, let me just start with this one over here. 
So what I try to do is also configure it in a way that I think most people have their instance set up. So obviously is if you're using some type of SSO, you don't have the ability to pick your language at the very beginning um, versus if you kind of just have your developer instance and you have multiple languages, you know, you, then you can set essentially the drop down at the bottom so you can have essentially your selection of languages. So I'll try to do it in the way that I think most people would essentially go and configure and have to work within your environment. Uh, so I'm going to log in using my account. Perfect. Um, and essentially this is just the, you know, I have the out of the block box um, applications with all the different components. And then you can see in terms of like, you know, the, for me, and I have a couple of different incidents that are listed over here. And um, that's essentially the starting point. One thing that I did do for the, in preparation for this is I actually created a brand new application. It's a scoped application. Um, and this is essentially where I'm going to do most of the configuration today. You'll see, I have a lot of kind of like really crazy names in there, but I, this actually probably going to be hopefully a great reference for you, uh, moving forward in, in the future. So first let's start with, um, the different components in translating. Uh, a mobile application. So first, let's just go over here. I'm going to go to the settings over here. So you can see, you know, everything's in English right now. So my language within the instance is in English and my phone language is in English. So that's one of the key parts. So there's really, you know, two key areas where you set the languages. One is actually on the mobile device itself. And the other one is within, you know, the language essentially configuration uh, for the user that's locked in. Now, if this is especially your first time doing it, I would highly recommend you set the phone in the language that you're looking to translate because that'll tell you all the things you don't need to worry about because they've already been translated, right? And then essentially those are all done essentially in the background from a ServiceNow perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and you know do that first. So I'll just go into the settings and go into general, scroll to language and region. I'm gonna go ahead and pick French Canadian. Perfect. So my language has changed. And I'm just going to bring my phone back up. Perfect. Oops. And uh, let's go back into the mobile application. And now you're going to start seeing, you know, for example, in the bottom right corner, uh, I can see plus in the bottom right. And if I go to settings, um, I can see a lot of these components, essentially everything here on this page has already been translated. So you can kind of think about it as anything that is not very instance specific. All of those are essentially configured based on the language of the mobile devices. So that's one of the key components. So I usually try to move over, flip it to uh, the language that I want. And then you'll also see there's some components uh, where this used to see, say see all in English, obviously in French now it's to voir. Um, so I can see all of those. But now when I look at the records themselves, so this is an incident, it still has open by and open and caller. And that brings us essentially to the second place where things were configured. And it's really based on the language that the user uh, has their instance set up. So there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Um, if the user is a desktop user, sorry, Fu or, or David, is there a question? Uh, no question so far. Uh, we have another unrelated question uh, around localization, but we'll take that offline for now. Okay, perfect. Um, so essentially, so from a user perspective, if you were in the main UI, you know, you could click on the gearbox, go ahead, pick your different languages. So essentially, if you have users that have already done this within the desktop UI, when they log into the mobile UI, it'll grab that, the, that same settings of the last time, what language you wanted, and it'll show up over, over here. Um, so that's essentially kind of the, probably the easiest way for doing it. So today, there's no way, um, there's no out-of-the-box way, I guess, is within the mobile to change your language. For the purpose of actually doing this testing and this configuration, I actually ended up creating a UI action or just a, just an action really um, to go ahead and change my language. It just makes my life a little bit easier. So I can go ahead. I'm going to say, you know what? 
Uh, I'm going to move this to French. Um, it does require me to log out and log back in, which I'm going to do right now. Uh, we do have discussions of essentially having this functionality added moving forward so the user could essentially change their own language, uh, you know, without having with any kind of essentially out of the box features. Give me one second over here, boom, reflector, perfect. So as this brings it up, I'm just gonna essentially show you I just took a quick screenshot just in case Reflector wanted to behave like this. But essentially, so now what happens is, not, without doing anything, everything that's already been translated, so in, the incidents, so now I see, you know, Uva Par, I see all the information in terms of, you know, Elve, in terms of the party and all those different components that are completely uh, changed automatically. So that's essentially kind of the great part of, um, if you already have something translated, it, the content of it is going to bring it from the server side. So really, at the end of the day, is when we take a look at the components, what we're looking to translate is everything else that is kind of brand new, um, you know, that we're adding. So essentially, when we take a look at, you know, this new app that I created over here that I have is, you know, there's the icon at the bottom that has a name that's right currently in English, and then there's one at the top and the one in the middle. So what I want to do today is essentially show you essentially a, a method, a way of being able to um, show the application or translate the application and give you essentially a technique that's going to essentially allow you to know how to do it. Uh, because there's really no way in, you know, kind of this amount of time where I could go ahead and uh, translate all the different components for you. Uh, but essentially, if you know how to do essentially one or two screens, you're going to be able to do all the other screens at the same time. So let's take a look at our application. So the This is my new app over here, right? Um, and the very first part I'm gonna take a look at doing is to say, you know what, I wanna be able to translate this component over here. So the nav tab, you know, TF over, you know, components com uh, that's there. So I'm gonna essentially show you in a few different approaches. So from a translation perspective, if you essentially know what you need to do, the translation is very, very simple. So what I'm gonna be able to do is, if you go to localization on the main instance over here, um, most of the translation essentially that will happen from mobile will either be based on the translated name fields table or the translated text table. What I did in this case is really just to make my life a little bit easier is I took a look at uh, this label over here, and I gave it a name, um, you know, that's, that gives me a lot of information. So I'm, I know, for example, is if I look at the format that I created over here, and you'll see it across kind of the, the different ones that I do, is this is on the navigation tab table. This specific field that's showing this is a translated field. The field name is actually label. So all I need to do over here is to go is, I'm gonna go and translate a name field table. I'm gonna create a new translation entry. The label, so if you've done these uh, before, it essentially they work the same for mobile as they work for everything else. Um, so essentially the translate label is what is it gonna look like when it's in a different language? So for the purpose of today, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the exact same label, but I'm just gonna change the last two letters, right? So essentially, usually you'd have, you know, uh, you know the name in, uh, in English, essentially in the value. So this is actually kind of the way they're linked. So this is, you're always, the value is always, what is it displayed in English, which is essentially is this component that I have over here on the bottom right corner. And then I go, what is it, do I want it to be in? French, so this is what that, that value would be. The element is really the field name. In this case, once you do this a little bit, you'll know, okay, well, that's actually the label field. Uh, what language is this? Because obviously you could have it translated into multiple language. So you're using essentially the two uh, letter code, which is the ISO code, so FQ is for Canadian French. Um, and what table is this represented on? 
So that is actually going to the navigation tab. So very, very simple within a few essentially fields, English value, translated value in this case, which is French, the name of the field, the language that you're wanted to, and then the table that it's provided onto. So that, compon that component is done. So that's one way of doing it. So the question might be, well, well that's great, Stefan, but how did I know that this was the nav tab, tab table that was a you know, translated field table and that was the label field? So what I'm gonna show you now is essentially how I get to essentially those conclusions. Oops, so it looks like we lost Stefan for a quick minute. Uh, in the meantime, uh, while he gets reconnected, uh, we'll answer a quick question. So uh, in case you are unfamiliar with the mobile hierarchy, I'm gonna add a link that you can pull up a quick deck on it. Um, and it kind of talks about some of the mobile tables that Stefan's talking through right now. So check this out. Um, and let's like have Stefan back, back on. on here. Yep, we have you back. Okay, I, I guess we're having the same luck that we did last week, huh? <laughs> I think we're all good now. I think we see your screen and uh, I'm gonna put, paste the uh, mobile hierarchy deck in the chat as well. Oh, it looks like you got your reflector back up too. Perfect. Yep. It's, uh, so essentially, so, so far we've done the one in the bottom. Now, the one thing that's unique about the ones in the bottom is they don't refresh. If you just kind of swipe down over here, they actually don't refresh. You actually have to log out and log back in. So I'm going to log back in. The good news is after this, I don't think I will have to log out and log back in. So this last time I should have to do this. Boom. Perfect. So now you can see the translation. So now I have the FQ. So that's essentially my label that has been translated. So now we're going to do it essentially for uh, the applet launcher. So essentially in this approach, I'm going to go to applet launcher on the um, main UI, UI 16, go to the different applet launcher. And then um, in this case, obviously this applet launcher is my localization. That's the one that I created. And what ends up happening is now I can see the table name, which obviously you can just look at the URL. So that's my sys sg underscore applet underscore launcher. So that's the table where that field is. And then the title is what I'm looking to translate. Now, if I right click on title and I go say show title, I also see that that is a translated field. So what that tells me is I have to go to the translated field table to go and enter an entry for this to give it a French value. So going back to localization, localization, I said this is a translated field. I'm gonna create new. And my value is in English. This is what it would look like in French. The element I saw that was the title, the language this is gonna be displayed is that's a, that's a two digit ISO. And then again, going back to my applet launcher link, submit it. Assuming I did everything correctly, I scroll down. What you'll see is now I went from EN to EQ for this one. Um, I'll do one last one because it's probably kind of the most important components is I'll do it for the applet over here. Um, again, I'm gonna go in here, I'll go to applet. Boom, perfect. I looked for the applet with the exact same name, which is this one over here. And then I can see, okay, well, this is the value that I wanna be able to change. I right click show name, it's a translated uh, field that is on the SysSG screen table. So go back to localization, translate name and field, new. So that's, uh, should I? I usually will do a copy and paste just to make sure that I don't do any typos the element, so that's the field name. I want this for the French translation. And as I said before, it's on my applet page. Go ahead and submit it. 
and save it, refresh, and now I have this component uh, that is in French. So that's one approach of doing it. And essentially what you'd wanna do is repeat that approach for all the different components. There's another approach um, which I, I like just because it's a lot faster, is to say instead of going to the translated tables, I'm gonna use the uh, opportunity to the fact that all of these fields that I need to translate are translated fields. So the next components we're gonna do is we're gonna do a function. So I create a new function, right? Um, and then you can see right now, I see if I go ahead and I, I have the confirmation message that's in English, the confirmation label that's in English, the cancel label that's in English, the placeholder in English, all these different components. So that's a lot of them that I have to create one at a time. So what I'm gonna do instead is on the main UI, I'm gonna go essentially into the languages and then I'm gonna change my language here as the administrator. So as I do this, and I'll do this one from Studio. So I'm gonna go into Studio and take a look at, you know, this is the mobile application I created. If you have any other mobile application, you can do it from here. And uh, what I'm want, looking to do is modify this function over here. So I'd like to modify essentially everything that the user ends up seeing. So because I'm logged in and these are translated um, fields, I, if I go ahead and change the value, so I'm gonna change the value of the name, I'm gonna go into messages and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So that's two, that's three, another one over here, four, five, six. So that's essentially six different entries I would have done, have to do in, a, um, in that translation table but what actually ends up happening is all that happens automatically, you know, based on the platform. So if I just go refresh, go back to my action and I can see uh, all of these components. Now I have FQ, FQ and FQ. So that's essentially all translated properly. And if I submit it, I also see the message over here that has been translated. So now, as you saw, as we went through it, there was a, still a couple other ones, right? So sometimes, you know, I have this one over here and I had the UI parameter. So here in, for example, uh, I have the name of the variable and I also had a placeholder. So you can see the placeholder actually here. Those are still in English. So again, same thing, I can go within uh, Studio. I know that I have to change my UI parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And when you select it, again, find the values that you want to modify. In this case, this is the first one. And then the placeholder is this guy over here and update it. So all I'm doing is looking at kind of the names on the, on the mobile phone, finding them in terms of studio and being, being able to make sure that it compares. So I swipe down to do a refresh, go back into my action. And now I can see I have the, the UI parameter and the placeholder all translated. And then the last one um, that's left, if we wanna do this properly for the uh, function is um, this one over here. So this is a quick action. This is, the, this is a specific instance um, of the function that I wanna be able to go. And that's actually, so that's, Define right now on my applet launcher. So I will go on my applet launcher and I'll take a look here. This is essentially what I want to be able to change. And I can go ahead and change it here. So now the one part, and then this, this is, I'll, I won't do it here and I'll show you essentially why in a second is in some instances, so Mobile Studio essentially takes all the configuration that you have within the platform and simplifies it, which is really great, uh, but also means it also creates an abstraction la layers between the different components. So in this case, when I take a look at a function instance, I can see over here the label, but there's actually behind that, there's a name and there's a label. If you change it, the change of value over here actually changes both of them, which means that now in English, you're actually gonna see the French translation if you were to do it over here. So what you wanna be able to, to do is to actually, you know, within the main instance is do it here um, instead. So that's essentially, you know, if I go back to, you know, my functions, 
officially. I'm going to go back into English, make life a little bit easier for me and everybody else. Um, and actually, I'll take a quick look right now. So you can see within the translated name table, all of the different essentially values that I created using Studio all showed up over here. So that made life a whole lot easier. And then there's also another one. So that was only translated names. Um, some of those fields were actually translated text fields. So automatically it placed them, like the UI parameter, for example, is a translated text field. Some of the information within the function are translated text field. So without having to, you know, to really go, you know, where is, what table is this field on? What type of field is it? So that I know that I need to create an entry in the translate text or the translate name. All of that information is in here. So now essentially you could do the exact same thing. So if I want to go to uh, my function instance, which I'll just go, you know, for the table that it's at, right? So this is my function instance. So this is what I was talking about is in, in mobile studio is showing one value. Uh, which they call label, but it actually kind of, if you update that one, it will actually update both the English and the French one. So in this case, if you want to be able to change this, I'd have to create a entry for the label uh, for the SysSG button instance, and that's a translated field. So uh, probably essentially best, essentially, you know, if you're looking at doing any type of translation and the approach that I talked about is do it this way. Um, kind of also a nice easy way is if you, you know, essentially find what you're looking for in English, then you can just go in, change the language. Now I'm in the language that I want. I'm going to go and change the value over here, save it. And I'm going to flip back into English. So you can do this essentially, you know, from, from this UI and just kind of essentially go back and forth between the different two, and especially depending on, you know, how familiar you are with the language that you're trying to translate to. So now if I did this correctly and I go back to my action, so now I do have the translation of these um, instance over here, that function instance, when I selected everything else has been translated properly. So, um, that's essentially where you would do, you know, 99% of the configuration and pretty much everything so far that I've found that needs to be translated is either when I go to the localization, a translated name slash field or translated text. The one exception so far is in the um, kind of homepage, set, homepage setting that you have, uh, you have the ability to essentially have a personalized message. So I have hello followed by my name, which is obviously a variable because it'll be different for everybody. That actually happens to be a message. So if we kind of track this down a little bit, um, I know obviously it's showing up from the applet launcher. So I'll just go in at the applet launcher level. And this is essentially what we're seeing, right? So that's kind of part of the header title. Uh, so just to drill down a little bit, I'm gonna go in to say, okay, what exactly is this? Um, well, this is, to this one over here. Let's take a look to see. That's obviously a reference table. Let's drill down. Okay, so this is essentially the table that it's on, um, but this value over here, so this text field over here, so if I do show text, it's not a translated uh, field, um, so that approach wouldn't work, but it's actually considered a message. Now, from a format perspective, what we want is hello space and essentially you know, the brackets with whatever ends up being there because that value could change over time. So what I'm gonna do is go back to localization, localization, uh, be able to send, essentially see the messages. Um, if you don't know how to configure messages, sometimes it really helps to just take a look to see if there's anything else that's, that, that's configured that is similar within your instance. And you can see that I actually have a couple different version. Um, and here I can see that the Curly squirrely bracket with a zero, it kind of gives me that um, and kind of that variable. So I'm going to create a new one. Um, the essentially key, so that's going to be the key is going to be what it is in English. 
the reason this one wasn't working is because it has a comma in this one there's no comma whatsoever um, what I want this to be is that you know the, the in French Canadian I want this to be able to say bonjour so it's going to look for this value and it's going to translate to this one go ahead and submit it and now if I swipe down on my phone I have the translation. So that's essentially the one that's slightly unique that took me a little bit of time to be honest, to be able to find within the uh, system. Now, a couple other things that I wanna be able to kind of talk about and highlight. I'm just gonna flip back to my PowerPoint for a second. There we go. So I started making a list and obviously for the purpose of today, uh, there's probably not a lot of value in terms of going and creating translation for all those. We did the navigation tab, we did the applet launcher, we did the applet, we, did the, we actually did the function instance and then some of the com different components for the functions. Um, but then there's also other areas that we didn't do. So the mobile section and the media sections and UI perimeter, actually we, we did that one global search configuration. So it's really just a matter of any type of field that you're configured on the mobile application that the user sees, you will need to go and create a translation. If it's something that you created, if it's something that's service now created, um, in the majority of the cases, we're actually pretty good at creating a translation for it. If not, you can go ahead and create your own translation. Um, but then there's a whole bunch of others and they'll continue to be more as more releases comes out. So for example, cam campaign some came out as something that can be configured within the Paris release. Well, that will have its own fields that will need to be uh, translated and the same things for many other components that were added as part of the platform. So the top list is in no way um, a complete list of all the different components. But essentially, if you use one of the two approaches that I showed you, which is either by knowing what table you're going to and updating the information, or just doing it, you know, changing the language of your instance and going to do the configuration, um, that's the easy way. And then finally, the last one is the message table, which is a very uh, kind of different way of doing the translation compared to the other ones that are either in translated names fields or translated text. A um, couple of tips uh, that I found kind of became um, either to save yourself some trouble or to make life a little bit easier is first use a different username on the mobile when you're looking at testing on the phone versus the one that you're doing on the desktop when configuring. So when I was configuring on the on kind of UI 16, I was using essentially, you know, my admin account to be able to do that. But when I was looking at the user, I actually used, you know, an account, a, a different account. And one of the reasons for that is, you know, I want the mobile phone to show me everything that's in French. But when I'm doing all my configuration, most of the time I'm always in English. And what you'll find out is you end up flipping the language of your mobile phone, not really realizing what you did if you use the same user account. And then you're gonna get in scenarios where you're translating stuff, but it's not showing up and it's not showing up because you're actually asking the phone to display information within in English. Um, so ch obviously checking the language the mobile user is in kind of goes back to one of the key components. If you, if you kind of do step number one, it'll save you a lot of trouble um, and making sure that you're in the right language. Um, and then the last one is what I talked about is you can go to mobile studio and as long as you're in a different language, do all those. Uh, but there's a few things that don't really translate. So just being in the main UI and going to do it that way will probably save you um, a fair amount of, of, you know, kind of time and um, headaches. Um, and that's essentially all I had for, for today in terms of the translation. So I'm going to take a look at the Q and A. Um, Those were really great tips, Stefan. So we actually have a few questions that are coming in. So yes. uh, the first one is, um, so it seems that we have a few customers that are familiar with uh, the normal development of localization on platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and they actually used like the debugging feature on that. Uh, and the question is, is there some sort of debugging capability uh, for mobile on the mobile side? Um, so, so I assume the debugging you're using is you're they're using it on the uh, platform uh, UI, so kind of UI 16 and not mobile studio. Um, and that essentially would work the exact, the exact same way um, as it would for the, um, for the desktop. So that's probably kind of the easy way of doing it, um, unless they're, they're doing, using it a di different way. 
Um, but gotcha. as long as you stay within the the, plat the UI 16, then you'll, you'll be good for that. That's really good to know. Um, we have another question and uh, it pertains to, you know, for the search bar on mobile, could you possibly walk us through, you know, how you would translate the, uh, the search bar, you know, uh, especially when, you know, when, when uh, an end user searches for an item and then, uh, you know, the no search pops up and because there's no records on it, how would you possibly translate that? Is it possible? Yeah. So let me just bring this back up. Right. So we're talking about this component over here. So right now you can see it says recherche. Um, so that goes back. So if I go to this list over here that I started to provide, so the global search configuration, so it's a little bit of finding, finding out where the, those values are. But if I go into the main UI and I go to uh, really, it's really, I guess, in mobile, right? mobile search configuration, uh, doo -doo -doo, mobile app search. Is that the one I was looking for? Yeah, there we go. So yeah, global search configuration is what you're looking for. Um, so I actually created a new one. I didn't add it over here, but you can see since that's the placeholder. So it's the same thing as finding what table that, that is. If this is the uh, catalog item and name, I'm going to go over here and figure out, okay, what, what fields do I want to translate? So this is going to be the placeholder. And then that's the field that I'm going to go and translate, which is essentially what's happening over here. Um, and that's going to be done on the SysSG global uh, search table. Um, all the other components in terms of like the no items founds, um, and I'll test it over here. Let's see if I can... Right. So this value over here, so that's essentially controlled, you know, by service now. So that's actually going to be translated already for you. So all you have to really translate is kind of the section in the middle over here. If you're creating your own uh, search bar. Perfect. I think hopefully that answers your question. Um, we have a question that's unrelated to localization uh, that Fu and I can take. So there's a question asking when you're adding uh, more than five application launchers uh, onto the nav bar, is there a way for us to set up mobile uh, so that when we have only three app launchers that the more tab still shows up? So um, that is a, a, a limitation. The more tab does automatically populate whenever we have, I believe four or more uh, uh, app, app launchers on your nav bar. It's either four or five. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, that is not configurable today but um, it can potentially be an enhancement and you can definitely share any enhancements with us uh, to our in, uh, internal teams. Uh, you can actually go to the community site and on that community site, there's a, a tab for idea portal. And if you raise a new idea on the idea portal, that will go straight to our backlogs and uh, our internal teams will actually have further discussions on it. So definitely check that out and uh, submit that enhancement uh, if that's something that uh, your organization needs. Um, I think we have another question. Um, and let's see. I think I lost it. Where'd it go? Fu, are there any other uh, questions that we possibly want to highlight? Um, there's a new one that just came in uh, from Jerry. Uh, it, are there any plans to bring language features inside near profile in future release? Not sure what. Uh... Yes. So I don't know if they're talking about the fact that like, for example, um, like right now there's no way of changing the language with, within the, in, within the mobile application. So if that is the question, then um, yes, we are looking at adding that um, so that you don't have to do what I did over here and, Kind of create my own little ways to change the language inside of the mobile application. Okay, great. Um, There's another one from Howard. Um, so would this be the same action if someone used a QR code on their phone to a ServiceNow instance um, 
for example, would only open the classic app or browser. So this might be referring to the deep link. Um, so Howard and Rob, are you guys referring to the deep link where you would have a URL and you can go either between a desktop or a mobile? Is that, is that my understanding? And then Howard, I can actually enable you to talk. So I'm going to set the allow to talk. Um, and if you actually unmute your mic, you can actually ask us directly and kind of give us a bit more clarification around your question. Also, also um, unmute Rob too. Oh yes, I'll unmute Rob. Howard, go ahead. Uh, if you're unmuted, feel free to ask away. I'm not sure you can hear me because I'm having some issues right now with my uh, little setup here. Oh, we but, hear you perfectly fine, actually. Uh, okay, great. The, I, the concept is that you have a QR code on a flyer and you say to open any ServiceNow instance, you then scan it on your... Uh, I think we kind of lost. Oh, um, yeah, it looks like we lost you, Howard. You were sounding great for the first five seconds, and then uh, I think you, your audio went out. Oops, so okay. I think he, I think he's talking about, like, if you have a QR code uh, and it points to a, an instance, for example, um, and that URL goes to a specific, like, say, an incident, right? Um, on a desktop, it'll probably take you to the, um, the incident. Um, but he's probably asking if I scan it using a QR code on my phone, uh, does it navigate <laughs> to that instance, for example? I, is Howard, is that, are you back? That's exactly it. For example, currently. Uh, so we, we can hardly hear you, uh, but I, I think uh, Howard did confirm, I heard. Yeah. So, so, um, so technically that, um, that is not possible because um, a URL um, is mapped differently from a web browser than a native application. Um, so uh, I answered Rob's question. I think Rob had a similar question. Um, so the, we have a thing called deep, deep link generator. Um, and basically it creates a URL but that URL is specific to a, uh, it goes to a, it's mapped to a form or a list screen in your native application. Um, so it, it behaves differently from a URL where you can map the URL to a, uh, a web resource, for example. So. Can I jump in there? Yeah, go ahead. Is there any reason why that deep link couldn't check the uh, user agent and see if it's coming from mobile. And if it's coming from mobile, then you know, pop the native link. And then if it's coming from a web browser, mm -hmm. redirect to the web platform. So that's a very good question too. So um, currently it doesn't do a check on the, um, navig the navigation agent. I think that's what you're referring to. Correct. Right, so um, every browser has, has a navigation agent. So one, one possible solution is, let's say for example, you embed a URL link uh, into an HTML um, email, for example, and the user can either launch it on their email client on their desktop or launch it on their browser, right? And so um, a possible way is to inject uh, some JavaScript that checks the navigation agent within that uh, um, uh, uh, cl uh, email client. Now that email client has to be a web instead of a, a native email client. For example, Outlook, because uh, it, it won't know. Uh, that's one possible way. Um, but I hear what you're saying is that after the deep link, check to see the type if it's desktop and then uh, launch accordingly, right? Either from a desktop or a, a native app. Is that my understanding? Correct, because in theory, then if you just injected deep links into your notifications or your QR codes, at that point, if it was on a mobile, if it was open on mobile, it would pop the apps if possible. If not, it would then default to the web. So you have one, basically, you have one universal link and that universal link will determine if it's a desktop, uh, map to whatever resource I'm going to. Correct. Um, like 
this is getting me a fair amount of pushback from my management of how we roll this out, the mobile app, and not confuse all the users because there's two different links and you got to, you know, teach the users, well, if you're on your phone, use this link. If you're on your desktop, use this other link. So there's a whole, you know, user training that has to happen unless we can solve this at the platform level. Mm -hmm. And for your use case, how are you uh, promoting these links? Are you sending it through an email or how is it generating? So right now, um, what we initially did was we have an email script that runs in our notifications run, and then it adds a, another link to the notification that goes out. Right, but, you have an email template, right? Right, uh, but that's not the desired solution. So at this point, I'm kind of looking to see if I can write a solution that would check the nav agent and then provide the deep link at, and see if that works. Now, now, are your users, when they open it up on an email client, is it a native email client or is it a web, like a Gmail or whatever? Native. It's native. So with native, I, I think I've tested it before. I don't think it's able to detect the... That's my, that's my concern. Yeah, it doesn't know. Um, I mean, this could be a further discussion with our inbound folks. You know, we could possibly raise this as an idea um, or an enhancement, possibly, food. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of take this internally and have further discussions on it. Yeah, I think, I think you should put it on the ideal portal. I, I, I think I responded back to you about that. I think that's a good use case because I've seen it from other customers asking this as well. Yeah, the, it's actually kind of already out there on the ideal portal. I was going to add a comment to the idea that's already out there. Perfect. Okay. okay. And then uh, were you able to provide all those details that you kind of shared with us as well today? I, I will. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Rob. You're welcome. Um, do we have any other questions in the comments? Howard, um, if, you, if you can speak, uh, I'm not sure if that address, you have the same concern with Rob or is it slightly different? Um, if you can't uh, say, I mean, you can just type it in if you want. Yeah, I think uh, Howard mentioned that he has a similar process that they have for the class gap in the chat. Um, and I think it impacts uh, their organization as well. Okay. Um, we do have another question around performance. Um, so there is a question asking, is there, you know, what is the limit on the number of applications and navigation tabs that you can put on the mobile so it doesn't slow down the app? Um, so would you possibly know? Uh, is this, is this John's, um, which question is this one? Uh, this is coming from uh, Jerry. Um, I believe, yeah, it's coming from Jerry. Uh, is there a limit of, is there a, is there a limit on number of tabs that we should keep on mobile app machine that won't slow down? I mean, how much is performance impacted? Um, do you want to unmute Jerry? I mean, how many, how many tabs are you talking about? Um, yes, yeah, so let me unmute Jerry one second. A lot of talk. Okay, Jerry, so uh, we unmuted you. Uh, so feel free to unmute your mic and yeah uh, hi everyone so um, thanks a lot for the session so my question was like uh, uh, how many navigation tabs you know is advisable like so that uh, you know mobile application is light i mean like some customers you know want uh, the experience to be similar to the portal but is there some limit that mobile applications, you know, should show this much number of tabs only so that, you know, performance is not impacted so, or anything. So as a best practice, you, you don't want to shove every possible tab into mobile. It's just to keep it light, but there is no limitation and, and there probably won't be a performance because the navigation can only, what David said, they can only hold four and then you have the more, right? And once you click on the more, it goes to another list screen where it lists all the other navigation that it's not within, that is not, that has an order that's less than your, or higher than the four that you had, right? Yeah. 
Um, so, so technically, I mean, you won't, you won't, the user won't see a technical, uh, like a performance hit. If you have like a thousand maybe, but yeah. that's not best practice to have a thousand tabs because, you know, you can't even search for it. Right. And to add to that, right. Um, you have users with different roles. Um, and so not every user is going to have the same view. Um, and if your intention is to display, you know, 20, 30 tabs on mobile, that's just not going to end up well in, a, in being able to create a great user experience for that uh, end user. And so you really want to understand, you know, what are the specific uh, landing pages that I want to create for them and specific reports that I want to enable for them. And usually, you know, that kind of consolidates to probably less than 10 tabs. Um, with, you know, your top four tabs, uh, it, uh, you're able to immediately see those uh, on, on the front screen. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's really no limitation. And as Fu was saying, there's, there shouldn't be a performance hit unless you are enabling like hundreds of tabs at a time. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Um, I think we were able to tackle all the ones uh, so far. Um, just one question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so my question is like, uh, is there something that we can battle just like uh, agent mobile app? Uh, like uh, since now mobile app doesn't have this, you know, language switching option. So is there something meanwhile as a workaround that we can do? Uh, um, just like, I means I had, uh, I have both the uh, apps, agent mobile app also and now mobile app also. So in agent mobile app, that language switch functionality works fine. So I was, you know, thinking that is there any way we can, you know, go into instance and check how it is there and replicate the same in now mobile? Yeah, so, so in terms of the language, um... They like there's there's no out of the box right now to change it on mobile. But what I ended up doing, so you saw the the function. Um, all it ends up doing is the language that is displayed on your phone is based on the sys user preference table, uh, or okay. it's like it's called the user preference table. So if yeah. uh, and you essentially what I did is just you know uh, found a script that was actually on the internet that searches. Um, so if the user already has an entry in there. Um, you can essentially either update it or, or delete it and create a new one with the proper language. And that's essentially what my function does. It just kind of goes in, changes the values from one language to the other. Um, and then, but it's, it's one setting. So that, that setting, which is the user preference table, is going to be mm -hmm. available for on the desktop UI or the mobile UI, which is either the non-mobile or the HR onboarding or the agent. They're all going to use that same value to dictate what language they're, they're displaying. Okay. So, so the function which you have built on the mobile, so it will change in the native year also, correct? It, it, yeah. So when, once you, when the user logs into the, uh, the native, the, 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 the UI 16, then they would be in that language because the, the setting is a global setting. It's not specific to mobile. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's, and just to clarify, right, it's not on the, it's not the setting that's on the user table, but it's the setting that's on the user preference yeah, table. Yes. And within okay. the user preference light table, there's a user language record. User for every, language. Yeah, for yeah. every user. So essentially, you know, if you just essentially kind of log in with different language, you'll see there's a record that's going to be created automatically for your user. It is going to have user.language as kind of whatever the, the type or the name of it. It's going to have your account and it's going to have the language, um, your, your like language preference. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Yep. No problem. Um, I think that's pretty much all the questions that we have. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up to for today. Uh, thank you again for uh, joining us for another mobile app Academy. Uh, hope you found this session was very informative and helpful. If you have any further questions, feel free to keep posting it on our mobile community site uh, so that we can explore other configurations in future sessions. We're going to have another session two weeks from today. So feel, uh, definitely uh, check out the mobile community for the latest updates. Uh, and with that, thank you all for joining today's session. I hope to see you at the next Mobile App Academy. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.